everyone. Today on the Writing Gym Podcast, we're talking about the power of story with Steve Woody. You're going to walk away with specific tips on how to take control of your online presence, how to create profitable websites, how to get your message out there, how to establish communication with your audience, and how to create an image for yourself. Welcome to the Writing Gym Podcast. We're here to pump up your writing. And now your host, Andy Brixey, personal trainer at The Writing Gym. Hi, I'm Andy, personal trainer at The Writing Gym. Welcome to Leg Presses with Steve Woody. I'm excited to introduce you to this week's guest, but first, a word from our sponsor, The Writing Gym. You know, you could break free from feeling like your writing is never good enough. You know you could write freely and achieve your publishing dreams. You're tired of rejection and lying awake till 2 a.m. wondering how you could have fixed your manuscript. Wallowing in self-doubt is not getting you any closer to your writing goals. You need real standards, real support, and real change. Are you ready to transform your writing and take it from the slush pile to publishable? We are currently accepting applications for select writers to join us in the writing gym. Visit www.writing-gym.com to apply. And now I'd like to introduce our resident writing coach, the gal who helps you pump your writing into shape in the writing gym. Welcome back to the Writing Gym Podcast, Annalisa Parent. Well, thank you, Andy. It's a pleasure to be here with you again. Listen, everyone, I know I share fun little stories about Annalisa every week, and this one might be one of my favorites. So, Annalisa, being Italian, learned how to properly twirl spaghetti, and yes, there is apparently a proper way, before she learned how to write. And now, anytime that she eats pasta with anyone, she actually teaches them the proper method to twirl spaghetti. Only, only if they want to know, but yes, <laughs> more efficient than sucking it into your face. <laughs> so check out some photos and some little quirks in the show notes at www.writing-gym.com slash online. And now we welcome our very special guest, Steve Woody. He is the published author of Plan Your Website, the 10-step guide to an online strategy that will get results and director of Online Mastery Limited. He runs the educational platform, which teaches entrepreneurs and startups how to create profitable websites. Right now, he's writing a second book and has launched an online course, which is already helping business owners take control of their online presence. Thank you so much for joining us today, Steve. Hey, thank you so much for having me. It's an absolute pleasure. I'm honored. <laughs> so, Steve, it's really exciting to have you here because having a successful website to build your author platform is something that is really increasingly important to our listeners and authors and really anyone looking to begin any kind of business. So can you share with us the journey that kind of led you to write your first book about this? Yeah, it's, um, it actually took me about two years to write my first book. It was about a good 18 months of procrastination, <laughs> followed by about a month of sheer hard work. But it was, um, it was interesting because I was always told, and I had, a, I had a really interesting conversation with a gentleman who was a, he was a speaker on stage and telling people they need to write a book. But I, I sat down and I had a, a, a chat with him and I said, I don't feel like I could just write a book for the sake sake of it. It has to be like my best work to position. Because I see a lot of business owners, a lot of entrepreneurs, See, a lot of people these days trying to write books just so that they can be seen as an author. Mm -hmm. And they don't necessarily have the sustenance that goes into the book that makes it worth reading. And so for me, it was really about having that right book. And as I said, it took a long time because I had to find out what that book was going to be about. And the reason it came about much be... I'm, I'm, I'm pretty, pretty um, happy to say... Well, not happy to say, but confident to say that... I've made every mistake possible. And I think that's what's led me to be in a place where I know what not to do. And so the whole idea of the book come about by educating people, by telling them what not to do. And by, by telling people that if you avoid the mistakes that I've made, you can actually avoid all of the pain and the money and the additional costs and energy and the, you know, the trauma that you need from the therapy bills that comes from building a website. It doesn't work. And so that was kind of how it was born. It was, the book was, it was, I, I wrote the whole book. I did 10 chapters. I scrapped it. I, re I rewrote it. Mm -hmm. And I decided that I didn't want to base it on technology. 
systems because they tried in and that's the strategy. And it was kind of that journey that, yeah. Go ahead. <laughs> No, I was going to say it was that journey that sort of led me to where I am today. It's, I could never imagine being where I am now. Like the life I have now is, when you sit and you manifest and you sort of visualize how you want your life to be and what you want in your life, like my journey has been quite an inspirational one according to many other people. And I tend to just think it's me and so I don't play on it too much. But at the time when you consider, and, I, and it's quite poignant from where I am right now in my life, when, when you look back five or six years, I was homeless living in a car. And so when you consider how I've sort of redesigned my life, not only to be an author, but to become an international best-selling author, my book's being translated into Serbia, in Serbia. Um, it's being translated in um, Saudi Arabia at the moment to be given out in universities. So I'm working with two big universities. So these connections and these things that I've made now are because I didn't just settle for the first book that comes to my mind. I, I made sure I got the right book out that the people need. Great. And, you know, one of the things that I love that you said, Steve, was about the quality of the book. Um, and one of the new ventures that we are launching, and this is really exciting, uh, we've got an imprint. We're working with a publishing company, uh, and, and I'm one of the fellow editors of this publishing house called Laurel Elite Books with the specific purpose of getting entrepreneur books out that aren't sort of what you're talking about, right? So people just kind of their information out there. <laughs> Um, you know, we want entrepreneurs to come to us who want their name on a book, but they want their name on a book that they're proud of. That they're exactly, that they're proud of. And I love that you were really committed to that because ultimately, as you know, those are the books that get read, right? If you pick up a book and you're on page three and you're like, this is incomprehensible. It doesn't matter how awesome that message is. It's lost in poor writing and we want clarity and we want people to really get our message and i love 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 your commitment to getting your message out there and then in turn helping other authors other entrepreneurs to build the kind of platform that can get themselves out there so you know kudos to you on your work and thank, thank you, you committed to having a quality message because that's so much of what we stand for over here in the writing gym and at Laurel Elite Books that we want um, we want everybody's message to get out there but we want it to be clear and we want it to be in a quality way so I think uh, I think that's important <laughs> I think it's so important because people people tend to forget these days they're so busy trying to write factual books that help and empower and inspire and motivate and we forget the whole purpose of you know storytelling and for me like what I found really fascinating was people the same thing happens with websites that happens with books people assume that they write a book and it will just sell itself and I don't consider all of the amount of work that has to go into the marketing and the promotion and it, it's never-ending I mean I still have to do it now I'm constantly it's a never-ending cycle of promotion and if I don't promote the sales they they're affected by it and so for me it's it's really interesting because when I actually launched my book officially um, and if it's, is it right to share a quick story? Because yes. <laughs> this is, this is, it's not one that I tend to admit, but it's embarrassing. <laughs> but I had a book launch. Um, I can't remember, it was a, quite a few years ago now, but I had a book launch. The book's been out about two years now. And when I originally went to launch it, I had a book launch about 100 people. I had a sponsor. Um, I had an event. I had all the wine. I had someone decorate a cake in the shape of the book. Um, I had everything there except the book. It wasn't ready and I'd actually set a deadline and we had this whole big event and I didn't have the book, it wasn't finished. It wasn't actually published. And it was so embarrassing and I had to, I had to tell everybody. And I actually, that was when I scrapped the book and went away and, re and started again. So it was a real challenge for me at that time. Do I stand in my truth and am I integral and tell people, you know, I'm not ready yet? Or do I just put something out that I'm not truly proud of? And there was a real, there was a real dilemma in like where, and I, I couldn't afford not to, but to have to take that step back, what that allowed me to do is when I actually did my official book launch, when I actually had the book, I, I was invited to speak on stage with, I don't know if you know Les Brown. 
he's a motivational speaker and I was invited I went and spoke on stage with him and I actually did my book launch on stage with Wow! and what was really interesting is I didn't actually promote the book at the launch I, t I told people my story and what was interesting is in the pre-sales because I have a lot of people following my story about how I've how I left the army went bankrupt, was homeless three times, lived in a car for six months, how I overcome all of that to become an author. And then because everyone followed the story, obviously I had a lot of in instant sales. And the reality is we know it's easy to manipulate Amazon to become a bestseller and to use that um, for positioning purposes. But to I topped every category. It, it went straight to international bestseller. And I was, I was trending on Amazon. And what happened then, and what I realized at that point, is that people were more interested in the story than the book. And so the first thousand copies that I sold, I sold off the back of the story, not off the back of what the book was about. And so I would, I would urge anybody that is out there writing a book to look at why that book is important to them and how people, they can connect with their audience to sell the story rather than sell the book. Oh. Absolutely. And I, I think what you're speaking to as well, Steve, is the power of story. And that's yeah. one of the things that we work with entrepreneurs on because you're right. They think that they're going to do kind of this school report on here are the things that I'm an expert on, bullet, bullet, bullet. And, and that's great that they've got all that in their brain, but you're right, the reader responds and are, you know, we're neuroscientifically programmed to respond to story. We love story. And so one of the things that we work on, and it sounds like you've got this in your book, is to infuse anecdotes, personal stories, stories of people we've worked with, um, the journey along the way, because that's what really inspires people. That's what jazzed up and going. Sorry, I'm so sorry. I'll just go interrupt you. One second. Sorry. I'm sorry. That's okay. For those of us, for our listeners, Steve is actually at a really fantastic event um, in London right now with uh, Tony Robbins, right? Yeah. Yeah, there's 10,000 um, people in the next room, so I'm sorry if you can hear them. <laughs> He is, he is so gracious to squeeze us in and give us a chance to get some of his expert advice today. Um, and that's something, you know, you talk a lot about sharing the story and stuff. And I think that staying, we talked a lot about with different authors about staying authentic to yourself as well and how your authenticity and your story are so important. And it sounds like, you know, that's exactly what you did with your book. You stayed true to who you were and that makes a difference in sales as well. And I think that's what I found really interesting about this whole situation at the moment is that when I wrote my book, I didn't realize this at the time, but the book itself, obviously people don't like, if you're selling a book on Amazon or in an airport or anywhere like that, people don't actually know, like you don't know who they are. They can buy a copy of your book, but you don't know them. So you can't actually establish a relationship with them. And what I found really interesting is I put a little, um, a little ribbon on the bottom of my corner of my book and I said, free workbook included. What I actually did is I actually, um, I gave away a free workbook um, as part of when the book was launched, there was a free workbook that they could download. And as a result of that, what happened is I started to gather names and email addresses of people. Um, and I started to establish communication with people that I wouldn't have otherwise known. Mm. I think the power of doing that is what I then did. And this is how I, this is how I started to establish myself is I turned that workbook into an online course. And then that online course actually become a second book and it's an actual work now. So you can actually buy the book. How can I start to because now I've got my book, my workbook, I've got an online course, I've got another course. And when I bundle everything together, just to give you an example, I did a Facebook Live. And a Facebook Live I led, it was about a five minute video. I led it with the book. So I said, Would you like a free copy of my book? And by the way, you would also get this and this and this and this and this. And I packaged everything together and I sold it for 300 pounds. And I had 12 people straight away on the Facebook Live buy it. So it was a, a very easy way for me, not using any paid advertising, to make a quick four or 5,000 pounds. Now, that for me actually started to uncover a lot of the journey that I've gone on. Because for me, again, it's going back to the story. How can you build that story with people? How can you take them on a journey so that they, they know, like, and trust you? 
And it doesn't have to be a, a, like for an entrepreneur specifically, of course, people want to write a book for positioning. But if that book's no good, then you're going to position yourself not as the expert, but as someone to not trust. Right. And I think this comes back to the same point that we talked about at the beginning about the quality of your book that you write. Yeah, you're absolutely right. If your workmanship is shoddy, people assume that your coaching, your message, whatever, is also shoddy. It really impacts your image and your brand. You are absolutely right. And I think so many people overlook that. And I suspect, Steve, the reason why you've had so much success is because you really paid attention to those details and the way that you looked in the world. I mean, none of us would get up on stage, you know, with our Hawaiian shirt misbuttoned and like, you know, flowers sticking out of our hair or whatever. I mean, if we were doing a professional speaking gig, we would show up to that the way that we needed to look and, and putting your book out there with incomplete sentences and incomplete ideas and, and all of that is this is the same as showing up, you know, like you just rolled around on the beach and <laughs> walked into a speaking gig. So you're absolutely it, spot It is off. so interesting, so interesting that you say that. So I've been through quite a few life coaches and I've had quite a few business mentors. Um, and at the moment, the only thing that I'm actually using, which is giving me massive results in my business, which is very strange, because I never would have assumed it, is I have a stylist. And I know it may sound a bit strange to have that, but my image, like people, people pay attention to how you look. Like, I didn't realize this, but everybody comments on my shoes and they never used to. And so I just used to, I mean, coming out of the army for me, it was always, I would just put on a baggy t-shirt. I'd put on some jogging bottoms. I'd put on some trainers. So they didn't really care what I looked like. It means an appearance was never important to me. But now obviously when I get on stage and I'm talking in front of thousands of people, people look. And people pay attention to how you show up. So, so what my stylist said is, is you should always look to show up at your foot to, to be the best person you can be. And like you say, in, in terms of how you dress, how you write your book, I, I actually paid for a full color book, even though I've only got two color images in my book. And I didn't do it for the color. I did it because it was a thicker quality paper. And I wanted people to have that kinesthetic, the touch points. So for me, it was worth paying the extra money for the thicker pages. So it was a better book. Yeah. Oh, Steve, you have got the formula down. And I really, I, can, I see Andy taking notes. I know this is going to be in the show notes, but I really hope that people hear what you're saying because I've got to tell you, Steve, so many authors, would-be authors come to me and they say, I don't know, is there a cheap way to do this? You know, can I, can I do this for cheaper and get the same product? And the answer is no, <laughs> no. I mean, if you, if you want to be the best and you want to show up and you want to get your message out in the world, it's about putting in the work, but it's about putting in the investment and you've really got yes. to make that happen for yourself. And, and you are the perfect example of that, right? You do one Facebook live and suddenly you've got all of these readers. Why? Because you put out a quality product and people want that. And all these people who, you know, I've seen this time and time again, I'm sure you have too, you know, they say, oh, I'm going to do it as cheaply as possible. And then suddenly six months later, they say, wait, why don't I have any readers? Well, there's yep. a connection there. Right? This, and this, this, is, this is one of those, um, those lessons that I've learned over time because I was, you know, I would quite happily go onto Vista Print to buy my business cards. I would get them as cheap as I possibly could. I would put as much information in there as I can. But when you look at my brand now and you look at my business card now, my business card has my name on one side, like just my name. And on the other side, it has my logo. I have no contact details. There is no way for people to contact me through my business card because my business card isn't a way for people to connect with me. It's a statement. Mm -hmm. And so when I give it out and people say, how do I connect with you? And I say to them, if I'm not at the top of Google, I'm not doing my job. So I say, Google me. Because what happens when people Google me is all of these articles come up because obviously I've put in the effort and investment. If, if I wasn't, you know, I can't have a company called Online Mastery if I don't master my online presence myself. Okay, it has to start with yourself. And so for me, when people Google me now, the issues around the big issue, um, how I outsold all sugar, um, all of these articles, LinkedIn, obviously my website, all of these things, they come up. So people get to see all of this information and I'm building rapport before I've even had a conversation with them. And then the people who are intuitive enough to find a way to connect with me, I connect with. 
Because if people can't find a way to connect with me or they're not, you know, if, if people want something, they'll get it regardless of what it is. If someone says, oh, I can't find a way to connect with you, then they're not really that interested. But if someone really wants to make a difference, if someone really wants to take their own presence to the next level, they'll find a way to reach out to me. And I think because of the way I am, and it may sound arrogant and I really don't mean it to, it's just, I've worked for free. I've done 40 hour weeks for clients where I haven't got paid, where I've ended up homeless, where I've ended up losing relationships. You know, I, end up, I got divorced because I was struggling to, um, to provide and, and, and to step up and to step into my masculine. I, I really, really struggled. And so what I'm doing now, it's not a place of arrogance. It's a place of confidence and certainty because I know I'm good at what I do. And the reason I know that is because everyone tells me that. And the reason they tell me that is because I invest and I put in the time to make the good book, to make the good touch points so that people's first impression, it lasts. Yeah. I'm not saying it's perfect. Nothing has to be perfect. A published is better than perfect, but it's the Pareto principle, 80-20. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Oh, God, Steve. On. <laughs> I'm writing so many things. I love everything that you're saying. So, one question that we ask every single person that we have on the podcast is um, if you had one piece of advice to give um, aspiring authors, you know, aspiring art, I mean, authors are essentially entrepreneurs at this point because yourself is your business. So what would you tell people? Just do it. <laughs> I mean, the knowledge, knowledge is the only potential power. Oh, if you've got the knowledge to write a book, I mean, everyone's got a book inside them. One of my clients at the moment, um, she's like a book midwife, if you like. She actually helps people write books. And one of the things that she says, and this is why I love you guys and what you do, because you actually help get that book out of people and you teach people how to write that book. There's knowledge is only potential power. And knowledge is actually worthless without action. Mm -hmm. So you have to take action. You have to step out. You have to get out there. You have to do it. I didn't write my book per se. I didn't sit there and write it out. I put a skeleton together of the 10 chapters I wanted and I audio recorded my book and I sent it to rev.com. And then when it come back, I used that as my first draft because I did what I had to do. I just, I knew the outcome. I knew what I wanted to do and I went out there and got it. Now there are easier and better ways to do things. And obviously if I'd had you guys and you could have worked with the structure and the, the stuff that you do, it would have helped a lot more, but for a lot of people out there, they sit and they procrastinate and they, they talk about it and they, they, they make up all these excuses as why they can't have what they want. A, a published book is a published book. Just get it out there. Version two is always going to be better. But you can start working on version two straight away. And you're probably going to be more inclined to work on version two once you've got version one out there. So my advice is simply just, just do it. Right. And... and uh, I just want to chime in that the market feedback there is really important, right? Your readers are going to ask you questions that are going to inform subsequent drafts. Absolutely. I mean, when I, when I, when I actually finished, when I got to the point where I knew my book was what I wanted it to be, I actually pre-uploaded it onto Kindle before I'd finished reading it, uh, before I finished writing it. And I give everyone chapter one. You know, I got, I got a, a, a beta test group if you like or a, a select audience of my target audience because I could give my book to my mum and dad and that's great and they'll tell me well done but they're not necessarily going to buy my products and services right. so it's very important that you have the right audience in front of you one of the things I teach all of my clients is that there is something worse than having no customers and that is having the wrong customer mm -hmm. if you get somebody who is not interested in your book and they read it they will give you a negative review on Amazon because you need to make sure that you filter out the people that the book's not for. Right. Don't try and sell it to everyone. Yep. So Annalisa, I think pick a niche. Yeah. Annalisa talks about that all the time about um, quality feedback versus yeah. just regular feedback about how like you can have your friend and your brother and your brother's girlfriend and everybody else read your book and get your content. But if they're not your target audience and they're not there to give you quality feedback, then they're completely useless to you. Yep. And the thing is it might give you, some positioning and some leverage in the marketplace but it's going to do nothing for your self-worth right. right there's nothing better than having a complete stranger give you good feedback yes. honest feedback exactly yes <laughs>
Wonderful. Well, thank you, Steve. This has been so helpful. And I, you know, I really appreciate your taking this time while you're at Tony Robbins helping out uh, with the crew to, to take this time and talk to us about your amazing book and the work that you're doing and um, kudos to you on everything that you've put out there and, and doing all this work for yourself. Oh, I appreciate the time. Uh, again, I'm so sorry. Uh, as someone who is really um, particular about the audio on a podcast, I just want to say to the listeners, if it's bad audio, if there's any, I'm so sorry for the interruptions. <laughs> I, I, I've done the best I can with what I have here to help you. And as, you know, as a gift, I'm more than happy to give a free copy of my book to anyone who wants it. And maybe we can arrange that or do something with that. But whatever I can yeah. do to support anyone who's, um, who's listening. Oh, thank you so much, Steve. That's amazing. Um, as always, to all of our listeners, make sure and check out our show notes at www.writing-gym.com slash online. And we will put up all the links to Steve's website as well as where to purchase, where to purchase his book and everything else. Um, thank you so much, Steve. And thank you, Annalisa, for more of your great writing advice. Annalisa is the resident writing coach in the writing gym. She helps writers start, finish, and bring to publication writing in all genres. And she's absolutely fantastic at what she does. You know, you could publish if you only knew how. Steve has given us some fantastic tips today, writers. But if you love the Writing Gym podcast, if you find these tips valuable, think of how much faster your writing will get pumped into publishing shape in the Writing Gym. We take you from generating ideas to getting them on paper, from how to find an agent to how to market your book, which Steve has so wonderfully helped you with today. You'll also get to connect with other writers who will support you and give you quality feedback, which we just spent all that time talking about. We even have a personal trainer, me, to help keep you accountable to your writing goals. You know how you always say, I love to write, but I just can't find the time? Well, what would it be like to have a gentle guide, someone to check in with you every single week to make sure that you're making your writing goals? Well, you can, and that's me. You can get the accountability you need to make time for the writing you want to do in the writing gym. And if you're serious about publishing, then please go to writing-gym.com and apply now. Thank you so much for joining us to pump up your writing here on the Writing Gym Podcast. Be sure to check out our show notes and download the free cheat sheet from this week's episode at www.writing-gym.com slash online. Happy writing! This has been the Writing Gym Podcast with Andy Brixey and Annalisa Parent. To join the Writing Gym, visit www.writing-gym.com.